My name is Erica Dunning and I am an AAVSO ambassador. Getting started in observational astronomy can be a daunting task, and there is an overwhelming amount of information and recommendations to look into. Today, we're going to talk about common issues that people face when they're starting out in observational work, and hopefully we can answer some of the questions you may have on the subject. First, I'm going to talk about how light pollution might affect your astronomy. As anyone who ever habitually looks up to the sky at night can tell you, light pollution is a real issue. Like many things in the modern age, light pollution is caused by us. We need to light up our cities and towns at night for our society to function as it has. But much of this light radiates up into the sky, and this increases the brightness of our night skies. Light pollution isn't only a problem for city dwellers either. Lights from the big city create light pollution that stretches far outside the city limits. Often you can see the lights of the city before you can see the city itself. The main issue caused by light pollution for astronomers is that it makes stars harder to see against the brighter background. This makes dimmer stars fainter and fainter until they disappear from your sight entirely. But just because you live in a city doesn't mean that you can't do research level astronomy. Apps like Loss of the Night can help you to measure how much light pollution you have in your area. There are many variable and non-variable stars that you can see in even the brightest cities. And when you want to start observing, start looking at stars with lower magnitudes. It's a little counterintuitive at first, but the lower a star's magnitude, the brighter it is. There are many resources available online at aavso.org that can teach you how to look at variable stars with a small telescope, binoculars, or even your naked eye. And even though light pollution is annoying, you can still take photometric and spectroscopic data inside city limits. We can't always get out to the country where the stars are the best, so it's good to know that we can still observe from home, wherever that may be. Next, we have Lauren talking about stellar spectroscopy. My name is Lauren Harrington, and I'm in love with the stars. Given that fact, it's a wonder I didn't join the AAVSO sooner. The thing is, when you think about the AAVSO, you're probably thinking of making magnitude estimates or doing photometry. In other words, watching how the brightness of a star changes with time. Now, there is a lot we can learn about a star through its brightness, but me? I'm all about color. Astronomical spectroscopy. You see, spectroscopy is a way to learn not just how bright a star is, but which atoms and molecules are buzzing around there in the strange physics of its photosphere. With spectra, you can measure the temperature of a star without needing to use a thermometer. You can measure the pressure on its surface without a barometer. It's no exaggeration to say that spectra are how we know most of what we know about the universe. For years, I admired spectroscopy from a distance, because I was just certain that it would be too expensive for me to try for myself. I mean, <laughs> I'm just a student on a budget. I can't exactly afford some big spectrograph or beefy tracking mount. But then I started experimenting. And it turns out all you really need to do spectroscopy is just a camera, a diffraction grating, and a small backyard telescope. Now I'm out under the stars every night shooting spectra using the very same telescopes I've been using for visual observing for years. With this simple equipment, I've seen fantastic things. Hydrogen emission in the thin outer atmosphere of a giant star, blue shift in a dying star's stellar wind, even a fine forest of metallic spectral lines that betrayed the signature of a star just like our own sun. And the best part? All of this fantastic data I collect with my telescopes can be submitted straight to AVSpec, the AAVSO's new spectroscopy database, where professional astronomers will be able to use my data to make new advancements in astronomical research. So, are you interested? You can do this too! All you need to do to get started is join the AAVSO and request a mentor through our mentorship program. We will be happy to help guide you through every step of the way. One of my favorite things about spectroscopy is how many different applications these measurements can be used in. Next, we have Kelsey to talk about amateur astronomy organizations. They're an excellent way to learn about observing and offer many opportunities that will help you through this process. 
Hello, my name is Kelsey Davis and I'm from Southern California. So my observing experience uh, recently has consisted of a lot of work observing double star systems. And I do that as part of an outreach effort for my local amateur astronomy organization. And uh, if you're new to observing, if you've been here a while, uh, if you're looking to make connections, I would highly recommend that you look for your local amateur astronomy organizations. Uh, you'd be surprised they're all around the country. Um, and uh, that's where I've gotten a lot of um, uh, connections. Uh, and, and often it's a good place to look if, you know, uh, wherever you are in, in your uh, path and observing, whether you're brand new or whether you've been around a while and you're looking um, for new and interesting things to do, I highly recommend that you try to find your local amateur astronomy organizations. Uh, they also very often will rent out telescopes, which can be a huge help um, if uh, you're new to observing and uh, you need some help because telescopes can get expensive. So I, I highly recommend um, that you take some time to uh, search out your local amateur astronomy organizations. Uh, they're also a great place to not just bounce ideas off of uh, other people that like to do observations, but it can be a, a great place to learn more about outreach, uh, to take place in star parties. There's all kinds of cool stuff you can do if you get involved with uh, your local amateur astronomy organizations. So I highly recommend that uh, you take some time, if you haven't already, uh, to, to find those people, uh, because I, I'm sure there's, there's people that would love to work with you. If you have an organization near you, joining up with them would be a wonderful way to learn more about observing. Finally, we have Molly to talk about introductory astronomy equipment. Hi, my name is Molly Wickling, and I'm an ambassador for the American Association of Variable Star Observers. You might think you need some big fancy observatory to do variable star measurements, but oftentimes you can use equipment you already have. This is my rig, an old 8-inch F4 Newtonian that was passed on from another amateur astronomer, a QSI 583 CCD camera, and a Celestron AVX mount. Admittedly, the QSI 583 is a relatively expensive camera, but it happens to have one. You can use a wide variety of CCD or even CMOS cameras. You also don't have to live under dark skies. I image from my backyard here in the San Francisco Bay Area. You don't even need a, this fancy of a rig. AAVSO observer Dr. Barbara Harris measures variable stars using a DSLR and a camera lens. There is even a tutorial document on the AAVSO website on how to do DSLR observing. You also don't need fancy software. I happen to already have PixInsight, but you can use a variety of image processing software to do the pre-processing, such as the free Deep Sky Stacker, since you just need to calibrate and register your images before uploading to the VFO online software provided by the AAVSO for analysis. So come be a part of astronomical research with the AAVSO. And that concludes our video for the day. I hope you all enjoyed and maybe even learned something. There are a lot of resources offered online at our website, aavso.org. Thank you for watching and we hope you have a wonderful day. Bye.